Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, I was messing around in Lightroom Classic, trying to find an effective way to change the color of water. I was working on this image. This is the Erie Canal, and this, of course, is a lock. And as you can see, the water isn't very attractive. I wanted to do adjustments to the water only, so I was creating a mask of the water. And to create that mask, I was using a brush. And although the brush wasn't difficult to use, it wasn't very precise either. So I decided to try an objects mask. And I was astounded at how effective this was. In today's video, I want to show you a few different situations where you may want to consider using an objects mask. Now for this image, I wanted to select the water. So I opened up the objects mask and there's two different ways you could apply it. You could apply it with a brush or with a rectangular marquee tool. For this specific image, I chose to use a brush. There's one brush attribute you could change, and that's the brush size. You could use this slider, or you could use the bracket keys on your computer. The left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. So I wanted to select this water that's more in the foreground. So I got a brush, and I just brushed around the perimeter like this. You can see how I'm overlapping just a touch, maybe with the walls. It doesn't matter. Come down like this, and then I just went diagonally like that, let go, and I got a perfect selection of the water. Now, of course, need to add to it. I have water in the background here. So I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to go to Objects. And again, I'll use the brush. And this time, I'll get a smaller brush. Use the left bracket key. I'll come down here, and I'll get this edge over here. Come over here. Go off in the distance here. Again, I'm just going around the perimeter. This, like this, this, this. Then I come diagonally across like that. Let go. Perfect selection of the water off in the distance. We have a little water and like a retaining pool or something over here. So again, I'll add to it. Objects. Again, I'll use a brush. And I'll just come in here and kind of just draw in there. Let go. I got that water selected. We have a little water right here. Want to do that? We'll do that. Objects. Get a smaller brush. Let break a key. Come in here and just paint up in here. There, we got that water. So I have all the water selected. Now with that said, I still haven't come up with an effective way to change the color of the water. I'm still working on it, and if I come up with something, I'll definitely do a video on it. But we have perfect selection of the water, so you could maybe make it brighter or something like that, or maybe come down and go to color and maybe pull some color out of it. But that's how you could select something like water in a canal or a stream or a river or anything like that. Use the object's selection mask. Now, another situation you may encounter is if you have a really horrible image like I have here. Um, Let's just say um, that I wanted to do something with this dirt. I just don't like the dirt. Well, how do you select the dirt? Well, there's no, in masking, there's nothing that says, you know, there's no dirt mask. You could select the sky and invert it and then subtract from it or something like that. Layout objects mask works great. So just pick out objects. Again, we're going to use a brush. We're going to get a larger brush. I'll use the right bracket key. And we'll just come in and do the perimeter again like this this up here, up into the distance, go diagonally across, let go. Wow, perfect selection of the dirt. So we come in, I don't know, make it brighter. What do we want to do to the dirt? Maybe add some texture and some clarity. So that's how you could select something like that, where there really isn't a built-in mask that will automatically select it. Let's go to another image. Uh, here, the subject is the barn. And let's just say I want to do something with the barn. So, of course, you'd open up masking and you'd click subject. In this case, it selected the barn. It selected a couple other buildings in the background, a bunch of trees. Well, I could go to the subtract function here and use a brush and subtract from this. An easier way is just to use the objects mask. So I'm going to delete this mask and we're going to click on objects. And instead of using the brush for this, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And with this, we just draw a square rectangle around what we want selected, in this case, the barn. And you can see we have a perfect selection of that barn. So I'll add some texture, we'll add some clarity. We'll go up here and we'll make it a little brighter. I don't know, go to color, make it more colorful. So there, easy selection of the subject when the subject mask didn't work properly. Let's go to another example. We have this image here. This is a black and white image, and it's okay image, but um, these trees that are in the middle, they're just a little too dark for me. 
Well, I could use a brush and kind of brush in the tree to use a mask for that. Um, if I selected the sky and inverted it, it would include this part down here in the foreground, so I'd have to use a, a subtract brush to get rid of that. An easier way is just to use the objects uh, mask. So we're again, again, we're going to again open up masking. We're again going to get objects. I am going to use a brush for this. We're just going to come in and maybe get a little smaller of a brush. And we'll come in here and we'll go across the top of the whoops top of the treetops. I went a little high. I'm not sure how this is going to work because now we'll get that grass in the middle there too. Like this, let go. And wow, it selected just the trees. You can see even when I went up in the sky, it knew enough not to select the sky. So here I want, I mentioned it was a little too dark. I want it to be more matching the foreground. So just make bright it, make it a bit brighter. So there's another situation where you may want to consider using an object's mask. And finally, I'm just going, this is similar to the barn situation where we don't have maybe a super well-defined subject. And let's just say I wanted to do something with this uh, hay bale that's in the foreground. I would open up masking. And if I click subject, you could see how it selected three hay bales. Now, of course, I could use the negative brush. That's pretty fast and just do that. But it's a lot faster right from the get-go or it's a little faster, at least right from the get-go, if you take the object's mask, use the rectangular marquee tool, and just draw a rectangle around the hay bale, and you'd select it very easily, and I can make it brighter. And maybe add some contrast to it. I don't know. So whatever you want to do to that hay bale, you'll be able to do it. So that is the object's masking in Lightroom Classic. I think it's something that might be a little bit underutilized. At least I underutilized it. Maybe you did too. Maybe you use it all the time. If you did, or if you do, that's great, uh, because I think it's really a powerful uh, masking tool in Lightroom Classic, and it's very effective, as you could see. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.